And as the swallows arrive, will the unseasonably cold weather here affect these migrant birds' survival? Our bird watch expert, Niall Hatch, will be explaining more a little bit later in the show. Help them. Now, it's traditionally the time of year that swallows begin to be spotted in our skies, but with the recent cold weather, will these migrant birds manage to find any food? Here to tell us more about this and other birds set to make an appearance here shortly is Niall Hatch of Birdwatch Ireland. Spring must be here because Niall is back with us. <laughs> yes. Well, it's in the air all right, but it's a bit nippy still and that has been a problem for some of our migrants. Yeah. And we're getting reports already of some early swallows coming in and, and you know, being, being early can give them many advantages. It means that they get access to the best nesting sites. Um, but, of course, the one of the problems now is that when they arrive in, there may be very little food for them because they rely entirely on flying insects. And when you get a cold spell like this, there aren't many insects on the wing. So a lot of these early pioneer swallows may perish. That's that's one of the, 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 the hazards that they face. So we're a bit worried about them at the moment. The reason they migrate in the first place is because of food. It is. That's, we, people often ask us, why do birds migrate? Why, why would they bother? They only bother because it's a matter of life and death. And it's all about trying to find food. So some birds, for example, familiar birds like robins or blackbirds in our gardens, they don't need to migrate away from Ireland because they eat a wide diet. They can find food throughout the year. So like a blackbird, for example, can eat worms during the summer, but then can switch to eating berries during the winter and other fruits as well. So they do just fine. But birds like swallows, they have to leave Ireland because there just isn't enough food for them here. And so they head down to uh, sub-Saharan Africa, all the way down to the Johannesburg region, actually, and then return to us again around this time. So um, usually April is sort of the month when we get the peak arrival of these birds back in. But there are always some early pioneer ones from late February to even early March. I think the 1st of March was the first one that was verified for wow. us this year. So they would have had a difficult time because of the cold conditions. Absolutely, very, very difficult for them. And once they're here, they stay here. They don't suddenly backtrack and go back. Yeah, and are many uh, many dead? Have many died? Have you got it's, reports? It's, it's impossible to tell because they're so small you wouldn't normally find these okay. birds. They tend to usually die at night, tucked away, so people don't notice, well, but bearing, certainly haven't been spreading through yeah, the country. Bearing in mind what they eat, um, is there anything that we can do to help them? Well, it's yeah. Well, one thing we can do and it's sort of like sowing the seeds earlier we need to make sure there's habitat around to provide the insects that they need so lots of native hedgerows making sure that hedgerows aren't cut illegally during the, the spring and summer months as well is very important because that's robbing a food support source from these birds uh, and also you know trying to, to make sure that when they do come here that there are places for them to nest um, undisturbed so they can replenish the population and um, over the course of a summer um, you know, a pair of swallows may have up to four broods of chicks so they can produce maybe you know 30 to 40 young a year um, okay. so they can bounce back pretty quickly and hopefully when the bulk of them are Arrive. If the weather becomes more clement and it becomes a bit sunnier and a bit warmer, then the, you know they may they may all be fine. It's too okay. early to say for sure. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's still another few frosty mornings to yeah. go this week. So, I think so. Uh, the, another bird returning to our shores is the sand martin. The sand martin is one of our earliest migrants to come back. It's a member of the swallow family. It's very closely related to it, but it doesn't come to to our homes and to our to our um, barns and sheds. They make their nest in uh, sandbanks and, and river banks. They excavate tunnels in the mud, and they usually start to arrive back in uh, in March is when they come back. So Many of them are here already. Um, the cold weather would have affected them too because they rely on the same flying insects that the swallows do. Uh, but they're built a little bit more for cold conditions because normally when they arrive back in March, they sort of they've evolved to expect a little bit of a, a problem when it comes to the mm -hmm. weather. So hopefully they'll be okay too. We in Burdock are going to monitor their populations throughout the summer to see how what their breeding success is like. Of course, they're coming off the back of a very wet summer last year. And for a lot of those birds that rely on those insects, all that constant rain meant it was very hard for them to find food. And certainly the, the nesting productivity was down last year for a lot of these okay. insect eating birds so there are fewer adults now returning this year so we'll see what sort of knock-on effect that has on the population but hopefully they'll have a good breeding season and they'll be able to bounce okay. back. The, these guys you'll find in tunnels and places like this. Yeah, they, 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 they tunnel into areas. They do, they, they excavate. First a small bird, it's amazing to see. They actually dig with their feet, they dig uh, tunnels into, into banks and that's where they nest but then they'll often be seen flying around rivers and also in coastal areas. They'll travel large distances to find food and certainly um, around this time of year you can often find them over coastal fields where they've just come in from you know from migration mm -hmm. they're exhausted they're starving so they try to refuel as fast as they can okay bearing in mind where they're coming from i suppose it's southern and eastern and southwestern coasts that we'll see them first yes exactly we normally get the first reports coming in from uh, from cork waterford wexford first of all makes sense that's the, the closest part of ireland to africa after all yeah. and yeah. think of the journeys those birds have had coming across the sahara and the mediterranean it's, it's absolutely amazing and landing here yes the in freezing this. cold yeah. um another bird that's going to be affected by all this cold weather is the common cuckoo. Yes, now they're birds that have, have really started to decline in Ireland in recent decades. You know, go back a generation or two and everyone would have been familiar with the, the sound of the cuckoo. Yeah. And, and 
They're, they're beautiful birds, and they, uh, they, uh, but now in the last few few decades, they've just been, been fewer and fewer of them. It's still present in all counties uh, across Ireland, um, but breeding success is, is, is lower and lower. And of course, they suffer knock-on effects from this cold weather too, because a lot of the small birds that they depend on to lay their eggs in their nests, they've been feeling the pinch. And if they have a poorer nesting season themselves, that means there's few opportunities for the cuckoos to lay their eggs, mm -hmm. uh, and that means that they're... Because they're, they're, they're squatters. Yeah, they are, exactly. They lay their eggs famously or infamously in uh, other birds nests they don't raise them themselves and why do that why don't they make their own nests it's it's just something that, that has evolved over millions of years it's just a strategy that works for them um, it means that um, well first of all the the parents don't have to invest very much care or attention to looking after the chicks also because they would lay um, you know just one egg in each nest they can spread the eggs over a wider sort of wider area so rather than having almost literally all the eggs in one basket they have more chances of success so if one fails or if predators get to it but at least they have other eggs around so it works very well as a strategy, but it does require healthy bird populations for them to be able to survive. They're very picky about the nest that they, they pick, though, that they will only lay their eggs in a nest of birds that, that brought them up. That's right. So obviously it's the female that lays the eggs and she will only lay her eggs in the uh, nest of the same species that raised her. So and they are very picky like that. It's almost like the females behave like different species, um, but the males will mate with all the females. So that's what keeps the, the species as, as a, a whole, all, all cuckoos together. And uh, it's something we really want people to, to listen out for. Um, the sound of the cuckoo once needed no introduction, but now a lot of people have never heard it. But it's, it's, it's very distinct. We always say that if you have to ask yourself if the bird you heard was a cuckoo or not, then it wasn't, because once you hear it, there's no mistaking it. It's yeah. so distinctive. We, we were listening to it just there. Uh, another bird returning to Ireland is a bird that will stay out to sea generally and that uh, is the sandwich tern. The sandwich tern, yes, uh, a seabird. We have five uh, species of tern in Ireland. This is the, the largest of them, the first one to return. Usually around, uh, I always associate them with St. Patrick's Day, that's when they start to come back into Ireland. People often ask us where that name comes from, sandwich tern, nothing to do with their uh, culinary properties. It's actually named after the town of Sandwich in England, where okay. the early colonies were discovered. Uh, and uh, because of their lifestyle, they're not so prone to problems with the weather at all. This current cold spell shouldn't pose them any problems because they're seabirds and they rely on eating fish. Well, they actually prosper in, in yeah. cold conditions. Yeah, well, absolutely, yes. I mean, they've, they've, they're designed to, to live at sea, so actually these conditions aren't too bad for them at all. They meet a lot worse on, on migration. They spend uh, the winter off the coast of West Africa, and then they return to us here, and it'll be a couple more months before they actually return to their breeding colony. So at the moment, they're just massing around the coast, trying to fuel up, and of course, what they do is they, they find fish. So, no, <coughs> you know, it would have to get seriously, seriously cold for the, for, you know, before yeah. the sea would freeze and pose them any problems that way. <coughs> and it just wouldn't happen in Ireland. So uh, cold weather isn't a big issue for them. And also, they get to rest during the Migration. They're migrating over the seas. So there are fewer predators, fewer pitfalls yeah. and hazards there. And um, so they tend to do quite well. So the cold weather shouldn't be too much of a worry for them. Mm. Okay. Now, now, before you went go today, you wanted to ask the morning show viewers something, something that we asked last year that was a big success. That's right. Um, the viewers really helped us out last year with a special project called Spring Alive. And we'd love their help again. Um, Spring Alive, it's a project we're asking people all over Ireland, not just in Ireland, also all across Europe, uh, the Middle East and Africa as well, to keep watching for certain migratory species. So the three we're talking about. We're talking about the, the swallow, the cuckoo, and another bird called the swift, which won't usually arrive until May. So we've got a few weeks yet before that okay. starts to arrive. But the details about it all are on the, the Spring Alive website. It's www.springalive.net. We have details there on screen, yes. Yeah. So what is it exactly that you want? You want to know when When people see their first swift swallow or cuckoo of the year, we want them to go to the website and give us details of the date and where, you know, where they saw it and what county they were in. And this builds up a big picture of, of these birds. We're able to monitor them, what's happening with them. There's loads of lesson plans for teachers and interactive games for kids. It's really good fun. And we're running a special competition this year as well. Um, if people let us know through the comment section on the, when, on, when they make an observation on the website, if this mentioned TV3 and the morning show, we'll put them into a draw to win a lovely pair of binoculars and a year's membership of Birdwatch Ireland, um, which is courtesy of the uh, Mitsubishi Corporation Fund for Europe and Africa, who helped sponsor the project along with BirdLife International. What did you learn last year from uh, what viewers' comments? We learned...